Hello again, everybody. Um, this is a, a tutorial about PCMs and ECMs, which obviously are relevant all over in cars today. You have to understand which are inputs, which are outputs. Regardless of the make or model, you're going to have a computer, and you're going to have inputs, you're going to have outputs. For example, right here you see the PCM. All of this is the PCM. Sometimes it can have 200 pins or more. Now, from these are fuel injectors. As you can see, how many? So how many cylinders? One, two, three, four, five, six. That means it's a six-cylinder, a V6. <clears throat> that means injectors. One, two, three. Top right side of engine. The other ones are the left. It's a V6. So. If I see six injectors, how many ignition coils do I expect to see? Also six. Now, when you think of fuel injectors, think of one thing. The opening and closing to give fuel into the, into the cylinders. Number one. One is going to be a B plus line, meaning the battery voltage is going to go to one side. Always think the other side is going to be controlled. Now, who's going to control it? Right away, it should come to your mind a computer. A computer controls all these lines. See these lines? One, two, three, six. The computer controls when they go on and off and how long they go on and off. A duty cycle called pulse width modulation. So, therefore, two things should come to your mind. As soon as you hear fuel injectors, I know the computer controls it and I know there's a B plus on the other side. So, <coughs> Excuse me, going along with that, ignition coils. And one more thing I forgot are these inputs or outputs? Since the computer controls them, it's an output. If it gets information from them, it's an input. It's not getting any information, it's controlling it. It controls a motor or a pump, it is an output. Now, we spoke about injectors. How many ign how many ignition coils should we have? If we had six injectors, the V6, how many ignition coils should we have? Same amount. One, two, three, four, five, six. Same thing, right? V6. Think of it. One side, one side should always go to the B+, which is this side, which go through our relay. ICM is like a chip, a timing chip. And where does the other side go to? See this? Ignition pulse, I guess it stands for or something. One, two, all these are controlled for the timing. When to, <clears throat> when to, to trigger the coil, this is a spark plug. This is the secondary, this is the primary. Over here, it gets DC. When it gets DC, the, the the computer decides when to open it. The magnetic field collapses. When it collapses, it it it, it um, gets a spark from primary to secondary, and that's how you get the spark. The timing when to do it is controlled by the computer. So again, think of two things. For ignition coil, a B plus, and also a computer controlling it. Is this an input or an output? This is an output. Why? Because it's being controlled by the computer. Okay. Now let's look at something else. Now sensors, a knock sensor, going to the computer. KS is knock sensor, and the other one is ground. Is it an input? Is it an output? Well, it's giving information. Whether it's pinging or something, it hears something or <clears throat> something in the cylinders, it's giving information. Therefore, it is an input. Okay? Now, let's go to more sensors. Okay? <clears throat> let's find more sensors. Mass airflow sensor. <clears throat> what, is, what is it? Obviously, it tells you how much air volume is going through the air duct system. So, there, so therefore, 
is an input and output. Well, it's going to go to the computer and it's going to tell how much air is coming through. It's an input. Okay. Now, a TPS sensor, throttle, uh, uh, throttle, some call it throttle position, doesn't matter. Same thing. Same thing over here. Over here, you have a little motor over here controlling it. It's not cable controlled. So, therefore, throttle is an input also to the computer. So, most sensors are inputs. Okay? The fuel pump is an output. So, you need sensors over here. IAT sensor. It tells you the temperature of the air. Is it an input or an output? It's an input. Why? It's giving data, information, what's going on. How hot the temperature is. ECT sensor, you see the one and two. Input or output? An input. Why? It's giving information, the coolant temperature, how hot it is or how cold it is. Right? So I hope you get the, the, the drift of it. You have to understand inputs and outputs. Then when you understand that, you'll understand much more. Now, there was something, a video that I saw. Somebody was talking about printed circuit boards and soldering. The, the, the basic problem with boards, this is surface mount. <clears throat> surface mount boards, there are through-hole boards. As you can see, as you can see, this is through-hole. See, These are through-hole. These are surface mount. Resistors, capacitors that I used to work on. Now, these are the pads that the surface mount is on. So when you look at the a PCM or ECM, it will have this kind of layer. These are multi-layers. There could be 10 to 12 layers in this PC board. It doesn't look that thick, but believe me, there are. There are. So, looking what's actually in the PCM board, are these are the connections from one point to another point this is what you put the component on for surface mount this is called surface mount again so main point is the pcm has a heat uh, a heat sink meaning it gets very hot under the hood it's very hot number two it was said in that video that it contracts and expands the PC board. That's why there's a problem with it that has nothing to do with it. Absolutely nothing. They don't go expand, contract. We're not talking about mechanicals here. <clears throat> the problem with it is when you're driving up and down, hitting potholes and all these things, there's a vibration. If these have a cold solder joint, meaning the solder joint is not fully soldered, you can see over here it's soldered ple pretty completely, right? That means the component, the leads of the component to the land, to the pads, are not making contact. They're intermittent. They're going. They're making contact. They're not making contact. That's because of vibration. So, heat and vibration, the worst enemies. And you're going to have vibration because you're hitting a pothole. You're driving 70, 80 miles an hour. <clears throat> or whatever right so if there's something not making contact <clears throat> you'll feel it when you're driving that has something to do with the board not contracting expanding in pc boards that's just nonsense so anyway what's a good solder joint i'll show you what a good solder joint is like these, these are through hole okay these are through hole these are good soldering joints. They could be a little better. They could be a little shiny. But there's one thing. The shininess of it depends on the type of solder that you use. If you use leaded solder, you will have a nice shiny solder. Nowadays, we use lead-free. Lead-free is higher temperature but doesn't have lead in it for health reasons. Because lead obviously causes cancer. So when we manufacture boards or do things, we use lead-free. However, it takes a higher temperature to melt that solder. The result of it is a dull-looking, non-shiny solder joint. 
The other ones, melt, the uh, lead solder melts much easier. And it is a shiny one, and you can see if you have a good, a good solder. Where's a bad one? Oh boy, is this a bad one, right? Look at this. One is bridged to the other. That's a bad one, right? That's a short, right? Not necessarily short to ground, but it's a bad solder joint, right? Here, it's bridge, they call it, okay? Just to show you. So therefore, when you're talking about PC boards, you can have a mixture of surface mount, what you see? These are, again, surface mount, surface mount, surface mount. And you can have a mixture of through hole, where the components, legs, leads, goes into the hole, which is, which is this. See, the leads are sticking out. See the leads sticking out over here? The leads are sticking out. That's through hole again. Surface mount can have two pads, it can have three pads each one. It can have a chip. The chips with a hundred pins, whatever, if they don't make contact, that's when you have that's when you have the problems. Intermittent problems. And that's what happens with these PCMs and ECMs and all these things. So therefore, that's a that's one of the biggest problems with these PC uh, boards, computer boards, whether it's Honda or whether whatever the making model is. That's what the problem is. So I just wanted you to understand. And here's a really good through hole. Now, you see this? This is not the best of soldering, but here. You can see this is through hole. See, it covers most of the pad and the lead on this side, the left side. Over here and over here. So, therefore, this is a connector. When you, This is a connector. Let's say this is the PCM board. Your connectors go in here. Let's say you have three connectors going in here. Then there's a terminal, a connector over here. From here, it goes through the components that it's supposed to go. Many times, you'll have bad solder joints over here. I reflow it. When you reflow a solder joint, take out the previous solder. Don't leave it, like I saw in that video, and then solder on top of it. That's not professional. Take it out, either by a solder sucker or by wick. Take out the old one, clean it, put new solder on it, and clean it up. That's the way to do it. That I haven't seen other people do it in the, in the in those other videos. I'm surprised. But anyway, I'll make a video and I'll show you exactly what I mean. Anyway, thanks for watching then.